What's up guys? This is how I would learn to code in 2025 if I had to start over. I made years of mistake on my progress learning how to code, so hopefully by you guys watching this video, you can see the mistakes I made and not make them for yourself. First of all, the niche or the industry we're going to break into is web dev. That is the easiest niche in coding to break into. It's very beginner friendly. It's very easy to pick up and start building. A lot of high schools will start people on web dev. A lot of programs start on web dev. It's just the easiest to break into. The tools that I would use to learn coding at that point would be either the freecodecamp.org website or the Odin project, both of which are fully comprehensive and fully thorough in teaching you how to code. I can recommend either. It does not matter which you pick, but both are very good. The first mistake that I'm going to avoid making is following these long tutorials on YouTube where it's building alongside with them. You think you're learning in the process. You think you're building something pretty cool, but after three and a half to four hours of following along with them and having to keep going back to the video rewinding and keep having to see what they did, you realize that you don't actually know what you're doing and you've lost all that time wasting your time. Don't do what I did. Don't follow these tutorials. They're a waste of time. They're completely useless for learning. Don't even touch them. Now, the last mistake was pretty tame compared to this one, which cost me one to two years. And I'm being serious when I say that AI dependent coding is a complete and terrible idea to do as a new developer. I started learning PHP, which is backend language couple of years ago and I didn't know anything about backend or PHP and I was struggling. So I resorted to using ChatGPT 3.5, which is the newest AI model at that time. It was just when AI was getting big and I tried to let AI write code for me. I got away with it. It was pretty bad, but I got away with writing my entire PHP backend with ChatGPT. Two years later, when everyone else caught up to me without using AI and then surpassed me, I was still stuck in the same position with zero idea what I was doing. I didn't know how to use PHP or anything backend related. Don't make the mistake I did. AI dependent coding is a terrible idea for beginners and please don't get the wrong idea. I love AI. I use it all the time, but as a beginner, don't use AI to code. This one cost me two to three years and it's actually quite a tame or innocent mistake to make. A lot of developers think that they're on the right path by doing this. And honestly, I did too, which is learning multiple languages at once. You think it's a good idea. You think that a lot of developers need to have a lot of languages under their belt in order to be a good developer. That's not entirely true. The real story is that for beginner developers, you really just want to learn one or two languages and get past the syntax stage as quick as possible so you can actually start building stuff. The misconception that knowing syntax makes you good at coding is a complete lie. Just because you know syntax doesn't mean that you can code anything at all. You need to know how to actually use the language to write the program. That's why when I learned Python, JavaScript, and Ruby at the same time and I kept interchanging, I never actually progressed as a developer because I kept trying to learn the syntax of each language, jumping to another language, having to relearn the syntax, jump to another language, etc, etc. The cycle repeated and I lost years of time and years of progress that I could have been a good developer just learning syntax over and over again instead of actually learning how to write code. Don't make that mistake. It's very innocent. It's very easy to fall for, but it's one of the biggest and most crippling things a developer can do in the early stages to disable their learning growth and keep them in tutorial hell. Another thing that I would keep in mind when I'm learning to code is that projects are going to be 90 to 95% of your learning or for actually like traditional learning. For example, if you're just reading documentation and you're just trying to go through it and think you're learning as a developer, that's not true. For example, the React docs over here, I could read through this and think, oh, okay, I understand what this function is doing. I understand what's going on here and pretend in my mind that I know what's going on. I, maybe I do understand it. I can look at the code and understand it. It does not mean that when I get into an actual terminal, I'll be able to replicate or write that kind of code. In comparison, if I actually wrote something using the React docs, this is actually an XJS, but if I actually wrote a function by myself and taught myself that way, just writing this alone, just writing this function right here, would be 90 to 95 percent more effective at teaching me than reading the entire react documentation from start to finish that is how effective projects are going to be over learning that's why i highly emphasize throughout the rest of this video and earlier on you need to be building projects okay at this stage i would be thinking okay i've got a little bit of front end basics i got a little bit of back end i need to specialize in one thing have a portfolio piece to show off to someone and they either get hired or be like advanced enough in a technical concept to move on to a certain niche so let's say I wanted to get front end heavy. I want to build an application portfolio piece that is very front end heavy. I would start with a JavaScript framework and then learn Tailwind on the side. Just go with one framework, just use their docs to learn it. And as soon as possible, go from documentations to building your portfolio. If you heard anything I said in the last slide, portfolios are going to be so much better at teaching you how to code. Projects, sorry, not portfolios. Projects are going to be so much better than actually just reading documentation. So the quicker you can build a project, the better. 
So I would build a project which would be my portfolio as quickly as possible. And that'll teach me all the front end knowledge I need to be considered an advanced front end developer, even if I'm really junior level, but that's all you need to get your first job in coding or just to, you know, be decent enough in your coding sense. Now, if I wanted to go back end in comparison, I don't want to do front end. I would probably pick up PHP at this point or Node.js. I'd recommend PHP for beginners since it's very friendly for beginners. I would probably use learnphp.org, not sponsored. Just I thought it was a pretty good documentation to use. So I'd use that because I think it's pretty beginner friendly. And if I really like backend, for example, I would maybe jump to a Laravel, which is a PHP framework. But that's only if I preferred backend. If you really like PHP, you can jump to Laravel. Then you know you should probably specialize in backend at that point. By the way, throughout this entire process, I would be continuously absorbing knowledge from some sort of coding source. And that's why I picked CS50 from Harvard. During this entire process, I'd be wanting to absorb coding knowledge because assuming I'm a complete beginner and I'm learning code for the first time, there's a lot of coding sense that I just don't have. A lot of that think like a developer, act like a developer uh, sense that I just don't have yet. And so as a beginner, I'd probably pick up CS50 by Harvard, which is a free video and platform on YouTube or on their website. And it's very, very good at teaching you how to code and think like a developer. You don't have to take this really seriously because it's a 24 hour video. I understand most people don't have 24 hours to dedicate solely to watching a YouTube video. But what I'd recommend you do is just when you're eating food, when you're riding the bus, just when you're, when you're just going about your daily your activities, just put it on, listen to it, or maybe just watch it in your free time. And this is probably the fastest way to be, think and act like a developer and really get that like developer sense that a lot of experienced developers have and kind of, you know, look down on developers who don't know anything and make fun of them. Don't, you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be made fun of. This is a great tool to use. I'm, I'm exaggerating with the make fun of, but this is really effective. It is more comprehensive than like a lot of CS degrees in America at the moment. That's how effective this course is. So I highly recommend it. At this stage, I'd say it's time you can jump off web development if you don't want to. I don't want to say you have to go into web development and only go into that. If you're self-taught, you don't have to be locked into web development. You can go into other niches. So at this stage, if I want to specialize in front end, I'm going to go into TypeScript, framework mastering, and state management, and all that stuff. Build a project. You're going to hear that a lot because projects are the only way to learn. So build a project, and that's how I can specialize in front end. Back end, same thing, Node.js, Python, Go, you get the idea. Build a project. That's how I specialize in back end. Now for mobile dev, React Native or Flutter, thankfully, we already learned a framework. If you did, or we got exposure to some of the front end language, so this is going to be pretty easy to jump to. For game dev, Unity, Godot, alternative game engines, and then build a project. Pretty simple. You can jump from this. It should be pretty straightforward. If you want to get into data or AI, thankfully, you might have learned JavaScript. You can now pick up Python. Python is going to be the only language you need for data or AI-related concepts, and then build a project, obviously. Finally, systems are low-level, C, Rust, and Linux, and then build a project. That's the best way to jump to that. Now. It's very important you think like a developer during all of this and think like someone who's trying to learn, not as someone who is feeling like they are not good enough. So, you'll suck. That's the truth. You're going to suck. Beginners just don't build Apple.com. They don't. Your website might look like this, and that's fine. Now, obviously, this website actually is intentionally meant to look bad, but yours might be unintentionally bad, and that's fine. That's completely fine. Remember one thing. Everyone started somewhere. Everyone had to start somewhere. The best developer you can think of had to start at where you are right now. And if you push through, if you stay consistent, advanced developers build products, they build and scale entire applications, and a lot of them start their own companies. Writing bad code is necessary for good code in the future. You have to remember that. And if you can keep that in mind, if I could keep that in mind while learning and you can do that, you'll be a better developer in the long run. If you guys need someone in your corner, you want someone who's going to be there with you and want one-on-one -on -one mentorship, you can click on the link in the description to personal mentorship. I offer that. Or if you just want to join a Discord community, I have one in the description as well. Other than that, though, I'll see you guys in the next video.